So you're interested in streaming live content through social media such as Twitch, YouTube, or any other streaming services. Now, I've been streaming for years now and I continually try to improve my stream and I have helped other streamers. Now today we're going to talk about a quick checklist to live streaming. Now currently I stream through Twitch but I've also streamed through YouTube and I have helped other streamers do that through Facebook Live and it's really fun. Now today we're going to talk about a quick checklist to live streaming. You know, we'll talk about some suggestions for tools and gears so you can start streaming. So the first thing in our checklist is the powerhouse, the streaming computer. Now I currently use a Windows PC, but you can also use a Mac. Now this computer out right off the bat is a little outdated. It has an i7 processor, 16 gig of RAM, and a GTX 660 graphic card. Now for streaming, there are a few things that you always need to have in mind. Your network connection, which will upload the streaming data into your streaming service. Your processor or graphic card to encode the content into the streaming tool. And RAM to provide enough write memory so that you can use your tool as well as other software while you are streaming. Now what I mean by encoding is actually taking all the data, putting it together and transforming it into a format that will be stream friendly for you to upload to the streaming service. With an OBL as mine, you can easily just go ahead and stream. But if you want to go with a more modern build, you can go with a 16 to 32 gig of RAM and a new generation processor. You can easily use just an Intel i5 processor and a normal graphic card. If you're going to invest in a PC for streaming, I would definitely ensure that I could use it for other stuff such as editing or rendering or just graphic design uh, for your stream or your videos, right? Because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that this will become a multi-purpose uh, computer. Number two in our checklist is the capture source. Now you can use a capture card which needs to be installed in your computer. It's not laptop friendly. Or in my case, I use an Elgato Cam Link. Now this little guy is a lifesaver. I personally got this Cam Link to upgrade my stream. Now I've been using the Logitech C920 for a couple of years now, but if you want to up your game with the quality in your video, then definitely you will want to get an Elgato Cam Link and then add it to a DSLR camera. Probably a camcorder like the one that I'm using, which is the Vixia H800. You see the link in the description below too. Now Elgato do recommend uh, specific cameras to use with the Cam Link so that you could avoid having extra buttons or info in your stream and those are used to cameras that have a clean HDMI output. Now the cool stuff about the Elgato Cam Link is that you can also use it as a game console streaming device which I use for my Nintendo Switch and it's fantastic. It actually works pretty well. I can record and stream my gameplay without any issues. If you're interested in knowing how to record or stream while playing your Nintendo Switch then go ahead and watch the videos in the card up here where I have a step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. Next in the checklist is the camera itself. Now as I said before I started using a Logitech C920 but I would recommend the upgraded version which is a Logitech C922X. Now the whole purpose of having a cam link is to actually use a better camera and not a webcam. So in this case um, you could definitely get a better camera such as a DSLR camera. I'm currently using a Canon Vixia HFR 800 which allows me to record videos, vlogs, uh, games, sports, YouTube videos and also stream. And the perfect thing is that it actually has a clean HDMI output which I can use directly with the Elgato Cam Link. If you want to go ahead and start with the DSLR camera it's actually okay because at the end of the day what we want is that you take out the best value out of your gear. So if you have a DSLR camera you can actually take photos, record any other videos and also use it for streaming uh, purposes with an Elgato Cam Link. Now for DSLR cameras I would probably recommend a Canon Rebel T6i because it also has a flip monitor. So you can definitely see yourself or your flip screen you can see yourself while recording and streaming next in the checklist is the microphone audio now during streaming audio is king you can have good quality video but if your audio sucks or they can even understand what you're saying then there is no point 
I currently use a Logitech Artemis G633 headset while gaming and it works pretty well. It's, it's decent. But for other types of streaming, I actually use a Boya Lavalier microphone, uh, which allows me to reduce all the clutter during my stream because I just need to have a little microphone connector plugged to my shirt and that's it. Now, the Lavalier microphone is not your thing. You can actually use an Auditanica AT2020 USB condenser microphone. Uh, and the best part of it is that you want to make sure that it's a USB version because you can actually connect it anywhere. It's plug and play. You can put it in any PC or Mac and you don't need any additional drivers. Lighting is our next thing in our streaming checklist. Now, to be honest, if you have excellent lighting, then you really don't need a high-end camera for streaming. You can either use the Logitech C920. Lighting will add an additional crisp and clarity into your video source. Now, I use the normal bulb in front of my PC. But if you want a more streamlined light, you can actually use a Dasmi LED light, which I added into the description below. Now to put all this together, we need to have a tool that will encode and upload all this information into the service. In this case, it's the software. Now there are multiple streaming tools out there, but for me, my favorite ones are OBS Studio, Open Broadcasting Software Studio, as well as Streamlab OBS, which is another iteration of OBS Studio, but done by Streamlabs, which they allow you to have additional features in the cloud to alleviate the stress from your device. There are multiple ways of streaming online by just adding a camera, but other people like to add a little extra into the stream, like you know, additional cameras, more streams, uh, additional scenes as well as layouts. For more on how to create layouts and additional scenes for your OBS Studio or Streamlight OBS, go ahead and check the videos in the description below. This is Edio4 and for more videos on streaming, gaming, and tech, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification button to know when new videos are out. Peace. See you on the next one. Lightning will help you add additional crisp and clarity to your video source. Now I use a normal book.